This video aims to bring to life some of the key auction rules outlined in the CFD Round 3 Allocation Framework. It is important that you familiarise yourself with these rules before submitting sealed bids in any potential allocation auction. Further guidance is available on the Delivery Body website. It is important to note that the bids and their impact on the monetary budget and the capacity cap in these examples is for illustration purposes only. These scenarios have been developed to help you to understand certain key auction principles. The bid stack. Applicants can submit up to four sealed bids with no more than two sealed bids per delivery year. The number of bids an applicant can submit is based on whether the target commissioning date, TCD, of their original application was in either the first or second delivery year. Bids are submitted using the same portal system that you will have used for your original application, and applicants will have five working days to submit sealed bids following a notice of auction. If a sealed bid is not submitted by a qualifying applicant, they will be issued a default bid based on the details that they are provided in their original application, as shown in application F here in the centre. Applicants can vary their TCD, TCW start date, capacity, strike price when submitting sealed bids, and further details can be found online in our detailed guidance document. Once all bids have been submitted, the system will stack bids from the lowest price to the highest price regardless of date, delivery years, capacity or technology. This is known as the bid stack and it's the starting point for any auction. Bids will be allocated from the cheapest price to most expensive as the auction proceeds and all bids compete on a strike price basis as we'll see in the following scenarios. Scenario 1 General Auction Principles On the left is the bid stack ordered from cheapest to most expensive bids and regardless of delivery years. On the right we have an auction stack showing both delivery years and this will demonstrate how the bids are assessed by the system. In the middle is the monetary budget profile demonstrating what the budget impact for each individual bid is in relation to all other bids across both delivery years and the two valuation years. In the final valuation year, a full year's budget impact is assessed. The first bid to be assessed is B1. It will be assessed from delivery year two, and you can see the budget impact in the budget profile in the center. The bid is successful, so any further bids from the same application, in this case B2, are removed from the bid stack. The next bid under consideration is D1. It is being assessed from delivery year one, and you can see the budget impact of this bid in relation to bid B1 in the budget profile in the center. All other Project D bids are removed from the stack and will not be considered. The auction continues with E2 under consideration. It is also allocated and uplists the strike price of bid B1 from the same delivery year. A2 is allocated and uplifts D1's strike price in delivery year 1. C1 is allocated and uplifts both bids E2 and B1, but you can see here that B1 is capped at an administrative strike price of £70 for its technology. This is the end of the auction. There are no sealed bids to be considered from this point forward and the highest successful strike price is set the clearing price for each delivery year. For delivery year one, A2 has set the clearing price of £60.42, and for delivery year two, C1 has set the clearing price of £73.22, and B1 is capped at its £70 technology-specific ASP. Scenario two, budget breach and delivery year closure. Here is the bid stack again, and budget impact display. Again, we can see that bids are allocated from cheapest to most expensive in each delivery year. Higher price flexible bids of successful applications are removed from the stack. And we can see that more expensive successful bids will set the clearing prices for bids below them in each relevant delivery year. If the next bid under consideration cannot uplift other bids below it to the same strike price or AFP, and stay within the budget, the delivery year of that bid will close. The budget can be breached in either the delivery or valuation years to cause delivery year closure. Closing a delivery year 
caps the clearing price at the highest price most successful bid before the year closure, and no further bids in that delivery year will be considered. If a delivery year remains open, all the bids for that year will be assessed until the year either closes or there are no remaining sealed bids. Once both delivery years have closed, the auction has completed. Scenario 3 – Budget and Capacity Breach In this example, I'm going to introduce the capacity cap. Here it's going to be represented by the chart below the budget profile. I'm going to also introduce a graphic to the right to show what happens when a bid might breach the budget, capacity cap or both and the consequence of this. Again, bids are allocated from cheapest to most expensive in each delivery year. You can see that B1 fits both within the budget and capacity limits. D1 is also allocated within budget and capacity cap limits. E2 and A2 are also allocated within both budget and capacity cap limits and they're also uplifting the strike prices of bids below them in their respective delivery years. Bid F1 has breached the budget, but not the capacity. You can see this on the graphic on the right. There are no more sealed bids available from Project F. This triggers a delivery year closure. All bids can be accepted in this delivery year, but we can continue up the stack trying to allocate bids for the open remaining delivery year. Bid G1 has breached both the budget and the capacity cap. There are no more sealed bids from Project G1, so the chart on the right tells us that this would result in the closure of the auction. Let's take a look at interleaving. Scenario 4, interleaving successful. Interleaving occurs when any bid breaches the budget and or capacity cap, and there are still bids from the same application present in the bid stack. Here again, we can see that bids are both allocated within the budget and capacity. Bid D1 has breached the budget. A flexible bid, D2, is present in the bid stack, and this can be considered for interleaving. An interleaving loop forms between D1 and D2. All incoming bids are provisionally assessed to see whether they can fit into the budget and capacity. This will include bid D2. Bid E1 is provisionally accepted within the budget and capacity cap. Bid A1 is also provisionally accepted within the budget and capacity limits. And finally, bid D2 fits within both the budget and capacity cap. It also clears up bid A1 provisionally. Interleaving here is successful. So bid E1 will clear up bid B1, and the auction will continue. We can see here that bid K1 has breached the capacity cap. However, there are no further available sealed bids from project K, so the auction will close from this point, according to the chart on the right. So we have seen interleaving work. Let's see what happens when interleaving loop fails. Scenario 6, interleaving unsuccessful. We can see that bid B1 is successfully allocated within the budget and capacity cap limits. We 
can see that bid D1 is also successfully allocated. Bid E1 has breached capacity. There is a further flexible bid from project E, E2. So an interleaving loop forms. It's important to note that interleaving can be triggered through either a budget breach, capacity breach, or budget and capacity breach. And any combination could have different outcomes if interleaving is successful or unsuccessful. Here, the system will try to provisionally allocate bid A1. It fits within budget and capacity cap. The system tries to provisionally allocate bid K1. And again, this fits within the budget and capacity cap limits, so it's accepted. Bid H2 fits within the budget and capacity cap limits and is provisionally accepted, clearing up bid K1. Finally, bid E2 has breached both the capacity cap and the budget. Looking at our chart on the right, we can see that this would result in the closure of the auction as the original bid triggered a capacity breach. No more bids can be accepted, and that's the end of the auction. Thank you for watching.